Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out the video. Real quickly, I wanted to mention that the reason I made the video in the first place is because I've been getting a lot of emails from people, uh, you know, requesting a copy of my HUD and, you know, you know, beginning transitioning players asking what they should have on their HUD in the first place. So I thought it would be cool, uh, to make this short video, which I'm calling, a uh, HUD school, I guess, uh, to tell you kind of some proven, uh, guidelines that I've used and that other players have used to have the most efficient HUD for, you know, playing a bunch of tables or even playing one table. So uh, stick all the way through to the end of the video and you'll also be able to find a copy of my HUD, I believe, right here on the page. I'll figure out a way to put it in. Anyhow, thanks a lot. Would love your feedback. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please let me know. And of course, leave all of your comments and feedback in the comment section. Take care. Thanks. Hey, thanks again for checking out the video. What I've got for you today is something I've put together called HUD School, and it includes the five laws for building a HUD that will actually make you money. You know, I've been getting a lot of emails lately about how to build a HUD, how to refine the HUD that players already have. Many players that come to the site come from live poker, you know, and they've never used a HUD. So they, you know, although they're winning players, um, although they're very experienced players, they just don't really know what the best stats are to include in a HUD, and they don't want to waste their time. So I figured, you know, rather than replying to each email one by one and hopefully creating some good value for everybody that's checking this out, I thought I'd create a, sor a short slideshow here that shows you kind of the irreputable laws that I've found are necessary to build a HUD from scratch or improve the HUD that you've already got. So, um, yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. Let's get right into it. All right. So before we hop into the actual laws themselves, what we're going to do first is play a little bit of HUD Jeopardy in honor of Alex Jacob, who I just read that, you know, he won like, or advanced, I don't know how it all works really, but you know, he, he was on Jeopardy for like six or seven weeks in a row, just destroying people with kind of an unconventional style. So congrats to him. I think he won like 150 K. Um, but the HUD Jeopardy I've got for you today is designed to try to get you guys to match the HUDs with the players. You know, one player I've got, one of these HUDs belongs to a high stakes crusher, another to a mid stakes crusher, another to a low stakes grinder, and then another to yours truly, Mr. John Bopre who's drunkenly holding ace queen off in this photo taken last year at a party um so yeah i'm gonna give you the answers at the end of the video but write them down do whatever you need to do maybe even think about what you like about these huds and anything that jumps out at you when you first glance at them for use of reference in the slides that are coming here in a moment and as I mentioned, you know, I've got the answers at the end, so stay tuned. But first, let's hop into the actual five HUD laws. All right, so HUD law number one, you know, contrary to popular belief, using a HUD does not make you a winning player. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Using a HUD does not make you a winning player. And in fact, most poker tracker and hold a manager users are actually losing players. Uh, so they're kind of lighting that 150 or $200 or whatever it is to sign up for the poker tracker software you know of course they're becoming better players no doubt but still just like everywhere else in the poker world most people who play poker are actually losing players so just the simple fact that you have a hud doesn't automatically make you a better player or a winning player you actually need to you know and learn how to use the hud and play better poker and absorb and implement better theory than your opponents the hud alone will not make you a better player. Um, and it's funny because in business, one of the biggest mistakes is, you know, people say, oh, I want to start a business. What's the, so what's the first thing that they do? Do they write business plans? Do they, you know, work on their positioning? Do they like grow their email list? Like what exactly do they do? No, they go out and they get fucking business cards, right? And it's the same thing with people who are learning how to play poker or want to start playing online poker. They say, oh, I'm getting poker tracker. I'm getting hold of manager. I'm getting a HUD. Oh my God, look at me. I have a HUD. I have all of this data on these players. Like, let's go. I'm ready. But remember, just because you have a HUD does not make you um, any better than the next guy, necessarily. 
All right, HUD law number two says that the edge you get from a HUD is only equivalent to the edge you get from being a good player. And realistically, the HUD is a productivity advancement, right? Um, what the HUD allows us to do, of course, it gives us some information on players, but the main thing that it does is, is it makes it so we don't have to pay attention to all of the players all at once. You know, personally, um, I find that when I play heads up, I play almost better without a HUD, right? Um, a lot of what dictates good heads up play or is just by being observant, paying attention to timing, pay attention to game flow, uh, sizing tendencies, how you know people, how they play on different board textures. It's not ne necessarily like, oh my god, you know, uh, I've got 50 hands on this guy, and uh, it says that he's check raising the turn six percent, right? It's not, it's not as analytical as that. So, something that I teach to a lot of my students is to not rely on your HUD, right? To pay attention more to uh, tendencies that are more important that, and to become actually better at playing poker rather than letting the HUD play the poker for you, okay? So what we're trying to do um, is not just like, you know, spend a ton of time perfecting our HUDs. What we're trying to do is become better players and use the HUDs to make better poker decisions. All right, HUD law number three, um, and it come and this quote comes from Stephen McLaughlin, who uh, is a good friend of mine, but also happens to be uh, the spokesperson for Poker Tracker. And he says the HUD is the most overvalued part of our software. I mean, what does that really mean? Well, you know, the true goal for Poker Tracker or Hold'em Manager is post-game analysis. Okay, um, the what you you know the. If I had a choice between using a HUD or using like a hand replayer, I honestly would use the hand replayer. And the reason is because the hand replayer and all of the filters and the other, uh, you know, options and different, um, you know, things that Poker Dragon and Hold'em Manager can do for you is more important than just using a HUD, okay? Uh, where a lot of the learning takes place, where a lot of the note taking takes place on our opponents is post game, going through the hands, like figuring out how people play certain hands. There's been countless times where, you know, I'm in session, I'm like, God, this guy is just like kicking the shit out of me. And then after the session, I kind of go back, look through the hands that he played, that we played together, and that's where I'm really breaking down as a game, okay? Another important thing to point out here is that, and it's a common question that I get, and I see on forums all the time, you know, how often should I play? How much time should I devote to posting on forums, watching videos, working with a coach? And frankly, I'm a big proponent of putting in the hours at the tables. Um, you know, and that's something that I would change about, you know, back when I started. I feel like I kind of, you know, I, I did a lot of learning. I went through basically every book and video, and I don't regret that, of course. It was a good exercise for me to go through, but you know, I do think that the majority of learning comes from grinding, okay? It actually comes from learning how to pull the trigger. Uh, most people kind of get lost in the fear that they're missing out on the newest magic bullet from the newest instructor. Uh, and the fact is that although there's constantly new training coming out that can benefit you, what's most important is that you get good at actually playing at the table and putting in the hours and, um, you know, analyzing opponents and being able to pull the trigger when it matters most, right? Uh, none of that new theory that you learn is really relevant unless you can learn how to uh, deal with the you know mental swings of a session or playing a bunch of tables and just kind of the intricacies that come with playing a lot of poker, right? So I would, if it's between grinding and playing, I would recommend playing, and I don't even think it's close. All of the successful players that I know, or the most successful, I should say, are just great grinders. You know, they're not sitting around watching videos and posting all day. They're actually playing. So... Remember that. You don't want to learn to just speak poker. You want to learn how to play poker. All right, so the fourth HUD law states that low-stakes players are the ones who gain the most value from a HUD. And I definitely think this is true. You know, at the high stakes, it's a small player pool. A lot of the players are adjusting their game constantly, and the decisions are thinner, and you take a lot more non-standard lines that don't have, honestly, anything to do with a HUD. You see a lot in, you know, Phil Galfin's videos and other players who are playing, you know, nosebleeds, where they're just taking these unbelievable lines and they kind of have to adjust a lot to maybe how a player is playing that day or what kind of dynamic they have with that player, you know, that their history, different stack sizes, and just a variety of different factors. Now, at the low stakes, we have these huge player pools. You know, I pulled up the Zoom tables 
not long ago, and there's like 20 people playing 2550 Zoom on Stars, right? But I go down to the 50 cent dollar tables, and there's like 200 people playing Zoom. So a couple of things to mention that at the low stakes, you know, since it is a bigger player pool, and since there's a greater number of weaker players, you mo- most of the time you're just kind of figuring out. Um, what who the player type is in the hand, and then taking a standard line against them. Um, sure, you there you become familiar with other regs. Sure, you change the lines that you take based on dynamics, and there's certainly adjustments to be made. But it's a lot different, mainly because the player pool is so big. Uh, and going back to what I said about the HUD being a productivity tool, this is why if I jump online, I can play 12 to 15 tables of 50 cent dollar and one two. Um, simply because my default lines against different player types, or at least the player types that are at the low stakes, takes a lot less mental RAM or brain power to play profitably against. But, you know, once we move up to 2 4, 3 6, 5 10, 10 20, there's a lot better players. Um, and you can only play, you have to, at least I personally and most players have to play fewer tables because the decisions take more thought. And it's not so much just about, oh, this guy is loose aggressive, I'm taking this line. Or this guy is just kind of a passive, weaker player. I'm going to take this line. So um, although you do see high stakes guys, um, you know, heads up, nosebleed players uh, have these massive, full detailed HUDs, where the the where HUDs gain the most value for the low stakes players. I think I even heard somewhere that Isildur has never doesn't have any kind of uh, poker software in his computer. Which of course, I'm not saying you want to play like him because sometimes his results aren't so great. But it's at least interesting to think about. Now HUD law number five states that each stat must earn its way under your HUD. <clears throat> Um, And as I mentioned a moment ago, less, I think, is more, especially at the low stakes. It really is a common mistake where you see these guys with these... That's almost the first thing that I tell more than half of the students that I have is, hey, you know, like, why is this stat on your head? Like, do you even use this? Um, It's, you know, whether it be at a conscious or subconscious level, I think that it's kind of distracting you and it's taking up too much of your time to even think about a stat that you don't use or that takes a while to converge, right? I see people with <clears throat> positional stats, for example, are a good example. Are, are, that's a good example, positional stats. Um, people will have uh, players VPIP from every single position at the table right on their HUD. And I mean, that's taking up a lot of space, right? And those a lot of those stats kind of take a while to converge. And I think that that's also something that is you can put on a pop-up that you can find just as easily. Um, and you know the second bullet right here it says know how to use the stat before you put it on your HUD. A lot again, like a lot of people have stats that they're not really familiar with. You know they have like a river check raise percentage or something on your HUD. Like you don't need that. Less is more at the lower stakes. Uh, make every stat earn its way onto your HUD. You know make it so that you're using it on a pretty frequent basis. <clears throat> you know and so given all that, given the five laws that we just went over, what is the optimal HUD? Like what should we include and how should we build our HUD? For our, for our own game. So let's go back to HUD Jeopardy, right? And here's the answers revealed. Um, the top number one is Phil Galfand. That's just a screenshot from a Run It Once video. Maybe his HUD's changed now, but that's at least what he had. Perhaps you could have guessed that. Number two is, of course, yours truly. Um, and I'll go over you know what everything means here in a second. And number three is a mid-stakes crusher student of mine. Number four is a low-stakes grinder student of mine. And you can see he's pretty much just got the default HUD there at the bottom. So um, what do these HUDs mean? And like, and how, wh- what do I think is essential and what should you build out for yourself? Well, it's kind of similar to if anybody plays golf out there, right? Like a, a lot of players want to get the like best clubs or they want to get blades if they're just purchasing clubs, even when they don't even know how to use blades. And I think that building your HUD is similar to like building your bag of clubs in golf, right? And the approach that I have to my HUD is certainly abides by the laws that I talked about. You know, less is more. Here you can see at the top I've got the player name so I don't get them confused. Uh, the hand sample, of course, 4,000. Then VPIP, PFR are essential ones. The second number right here 
is aggression factor. Last number there is went to showdown. Second line is, you know, I have three bet, fold the three bet, donk bet, which I think is the only stat on here that I would really change. I'm not sure that I really need donk bet on my HUD. I mean, that's another, I think, statistic that I could probably put on a pop-up and use that way. Um, bottom line, we've got C bet, flop, fold to C bet. I'm sorry, um, C bet turn, fold to C bet on the flop, fold to C bet on the turn. So, why do I like these stats? Well, I think that they give me a good overall idea of how aggressive an opponent is, right? No matter the hand sample. Um, I like the way that I categorize players typically is between pre-flop and post-flop aggression. Especially if you're playing the low and mid stakes, a lot of players, you know, they're some kind of combination of the two. They are very aggressive pre-flop, but maybe they're straightforward post-flop. Or maybe they're um, passive pre-flop, but they're very aggressive post-flop. And typically those are tendencies that I'm looking for, you know. Uh, and then in the actual note box, what I like to do is take board texture tendencies. You know, are they... Um, very aggressive on low boards. Do, which boards do they like to attack? Which boards are they c-betting their air with? Which ones are they checking back medium strength hands on? Um, what are their tendencies at different stack sizes? You know, how do they play in three bet pots? Did I see them make a bad stack off? Um, something else to consider is what do I believe they think of me? Right, that's very important. Wh what does this player see me do? Like, did they bust me in a bad bluff? Um, did they see me value bet thinly? Like, these are things that you can definitely write down. And, of course, it matters from player to player whether they're even thinking about that. But those are things that I like to get in the habit of writing down regardless. Something else that's cool to consider is that I, I have the numbers color-coded here. I think that back in the day what I used to do is I would color-code my numbers based off of pre-flop, flop, and turn statistics just because so it would be easier to find you know as I mentioned I've played up to 15 tables back in the day so it's kind of easier on the eyes to be able to search for a stat if I'm looking for it and you know I think that if you are somebody we can see at the top up here like Phil Galfin's HUD I think that he certainly knows how to use each one of these stats and most of the players in his games he has a pretty good sample on so these are going to be good stats for him. We can see that he has like a four bet statistic in there. Um, he has like, it looks like fold to three bet in position, fold to three bet out of position, some more specific stats. But again, like um, these are statistics that I don't think are as applicable at the lower stakes. Um, so, you know, mainly you want to just make sure that you are comfortable with your own HUD and you know how to use it. Something that's important to note is that the most basic out of all of these is my student here in the on the bottom with just the default HUD. But he, I mean, he he crushes people. I mean, he's he's got like an extremely high win rate. So it it just kind of depends on what your what your comfort level is, and what's manageable for, manageable for you, depending on how many tables you play. All right, and that's gonna do it. Thanks for checking out this short video. I appreciate you guys watching. I love making these kind of videos for you, but more than anything, I love your feedback. If you guys enjoyed this kind of format, if you want to talk about another topic, please write it in the comments and let me know uh, if you want me to expand on any of the topics we covered in this video. Appreciate it. And on this page, I think below the video, I will include a link that you can download a copy of the HUD that I use, just in case you're looking for a good go-to HUD. Um, if you, you know, you're trying to um, break past like your default HUD and you just want something quick. But I do think that everybody should customize their own HUD based on the, their own preferences and what they think works for them. Take care, guys. Good luck. Go out there and have some NHs, all right? See you later.